Hello, 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 hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel, right? Today, we're gonna solve this interesting problem of magic squares in the grid. And this problem, I would say, is a funny problem because the logic is very, very simple. But after seeing so many conditions, so many checks, people will be like, ah, oh, you have to do like these kind of things. Oh, so many checks, implementation thing. I hate implementation questions. Trust me, I also hate the same. But nevertheless, lead code gives a POTD, so we need to solve. And the question might come in OAs as well, online assessments. So yeah, we need to have a good hand on practice on these kind of questions. And with that note, let's get started with the video then. 840 magic squares in a grid. A 3 cross 3 magic square is a 3 cross 3 grid filled with distinct numbers from 1 to 9. Very, very important. Conditions, let's try to note the conditions. Distinct integers from 1 to 9. Okay. It's like a Sudoku such that each row, column, both diagonals all have pins. Every row, every column, and the diagonals, the two diagonals all have the same sum. Okay. Given a row cross call grid of integer, how many 3 cross 3 magic square you can calculate? Like, right. Note that while a magic square can only contain a number from 1 to 9, grid may contain up to 15. It's very important. They mentioned that. That's a good thing about that. Either you need to read from the constraints, but they already mentioned that. They contain, they should contain 1 to 9, but the grid may contain the number from 0 to 15. And these are the edge cases. Like, you can solve this question definitely, but either in one go, that's a question. Right, you have to handle the edge cases properly. That's a challenge, okay? Okay, and after seeing this, firstly, we thought, Oh, this might be a DP problem that okay, we have to do some grades calculations, but surprisingly, the constraints become 10 everywhere. So, this makes the problem very, very simple, right? Very simple. You don't need to think much about it now, it means 10 10 is there, so we can iterate on the whole grid, something we can do. So, we can think of a brute force idea. So the time complexity is not a matter of concern. Perfectly fine. Let's get proceeded. So, we understood from this example, okay, how, what is the 3 cross 3 grid, which is a magic square, like this grid, if you talk about. Okay, every sum is 15. See, see that, 7, 15, you can see the diagonal, every row, every column. Hmm, interesting, interesting. And the sum is 15. Perfectly fine. So, we need to figure out the grids. So, firstly, try to understand that, how can we, just iterate on these grids. That is very, very important. Very, very important. How you slide on these grids. Hmm, that's a good question, Sam. How we do that? See, we are currently at a index i, j. Okay, we want to make a grid like this. This is what i plus 2 j. This is what i plus 2 j plus 2. And this is what i j plus 2. This is a kind of a grid, 3 cross 3 grid we are talking about. And this you have to iterate with. That means what? That means we have an index. We can go on every index i comma j. We can run a loop from let's say k is equals to i to i plus 2, right? Why? Because we want to make a 3 cross 3 grid. We just need to iterate on this like this. See, like this. Like this, you need to slide the window similarly downwards. Similarly, downwards, it's not difficult. Don't think it, it will mess it up, it won't, it won't, it won't. Just try to think about it like this. But here, since there are only two rows remaining, so we cannot do that. That means we found a something, a condition here. We can slide it until we have something to left, right? Means we should have two columns left and two rows left, then only. We can iterate. So these i comma j pairs, we understood that the starting point, like this is the top left corner of our grid. So it cannot go beyond a certain point. That means it can go up to at the max, it will be less than n minus 2. And the i that would be and j would be less than m minus 2. I hope you are getting it. Why? Because we we need two more nodes down, two more columns rightwards. At that, we will stop. See, here also, we stop here. We stop, we go here, we go here, we, wo we won't go this column. Because there are no further columns remaining, right? That is very, very important. I hope you are getting it. 
cool now what we have to do we have to calculate the sum make the sum equal no, not make the sum equal we just need to check whether the equal sum exists or not exists or not perfectly fine sir can we find out some properties many people can think i would say you can do that and i also found some properties but i would say this is a waste of time to finding out the properties in making the equations because it will take a lot of time to make some equation make some reduction either you know it before that is that you solve this question before then you can deduce those properties otherwise if you got in this equation in oa or interview i think you should tell the brute force solution that would work more better okay <laughs> but let's try to figure out some properties <laughs> sorry for the Mm, I got a bad throat, but okay, cool. So we have a grid. So a one one, a one two, a one three, a two one, a two two, a two three, a three one, a three two, and a three three. So this columns, this columns, and this columns. Every column should be same. So let's say the sum is s one. This is s, but both are same. You can say s, and this is also s. And since all the numbers are have to between the range one to n and distinct, that means all are present. That means one plus total sum would be till 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 nine, which is equals to what nine into ten by two, which is forty five. Forty five is equals to what ah uh, three into s, which is s equals to fifteen. That means every sum should be equals to fifteen. Perfectly fine, sir. Okay, that is right. Now, okay, this is the thing. Another deduction you can make like this also. I read it somewhere. Means you can skip it, but it's just boost up your time complexity. That the middle element in these kind of cases has to be five. Middle element has to be five. Otherwise, it won't form that formula. The all the condition. But okay, like you can skip this condition, but this you can reduce. I think this is easy. This is something you can skip. Okay. Cool. No problem with that, right? So we understood what we have to slide the windows firstly, like through the horizontally and then diagonally. Firstly, we'll go uh, horizontally, then we'll keep changing the rows as well, right? Okay, so yeah. So we got the conditions here. Let's try to put down all the conditions. So what are we gonna do? So it's our job is very simple. Iterate on every uh, every i comma j pair. Pair. Obviously, a valid matrix has to be formed from there. So I already told you, don't go beyond n minus two and m minus two. Okay. After that, we know how to iterate from this position to form a grid. So what are the co coordinates? The they you can use a k coordinate and a l coordinate goes from i to i plus two and j to j plus two. Inclusive, obviously. Okay. We we got these are the coordinates for our three cross three grid. Now what we need to check. We need to check firstly that it should be distinct. Distinct first condition should be in the range one to nine. Should be in range one to nine. That is another condition, right? Okay. Row sum we need to check. So what for checking the row sum? Can we make a row array? Row array. And similarly a column array. Column array. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. You can make that. Obviously, of size three and three only because there are three rows, three columns. While iterating in that grid, can you update this row sum and can you update this call sum? Absolutely, you can do that because when whenever you add a particular row, increase that sum to the right row. That means what? You can do that row of k plus equals to per element. Similarly, call of whatever l. Plus equals to current element. This is the current column. This is the current row. So that would be some added to the current row and the current column. You can do that. Right. Firstly, you have done that. In any case, if you have got some repetitive element or maybe outside the range, straight away return false. See, remember that. Write this function outside, outside like a check function. Why I am saying that? Because if you Write this loop inside your main function itself. You have to write the break logic, and you should not do that because that will make the code messy. You should write clean code. In these kind of cases, implementation is most important. You will able to debug faster. So importantly, write a main function for 
i comma j pair and then write a check function that will check <laughs> valid matrix if, if it is a magic matrix or not for the magic matrix very very important okay perfectly fine sahi perfectly fine so what we can do is this we have done then after that what you going to do you going to iterate very simple in column rows row sum and call sum checking it should be equals to 15 or not it should be equals to 15 or not if any of them not satisfy straight away return false then what do you have to do you have to check the diagonals how you check the diagonals very very important see it's just observations so see what we are standing at we are standing at i comma j this is like i comma j plus 1 it's like i comma j plus 2 it's like i plus 1 j i plus 2 j i plus 1 j plus 1 i plus 1 or i plus 2 j plus 1 i plus 1 j plus 2 and i plus 2 j plus 2 okay these are the elements now you have to traverse in this way can you see a pattern every time some element same element increases like zero added to first then one one added and two two added so it's very simple this diagonal at least what you can do you can run a loop k equals to 0 to k to 2 obviously outside our remaining loops and then what you going to do what your modify coordinates your modify coordinate would be i plus k comma j plus k j and k i and j are the starting coordinates they're shifted origin kind of things and you can just check you can like create the sum diagonal sum you can create out of it right very simple same yes perfectly fit can you figure out the logic similarly for this diagonal that is very very important ah uh, sayam we i can figure out if i see here so what is it happening i plus 2 j then it is happening i plus 1 j and then it's like i j plus oh, sorry it's j plus 1 it's j plus 2 oh same 2 1 0 for the row and 0 1 2 for the column if i go in this way so what i can do what i can do i can write like this i plus 2 minus k comma j plus k this would be called and k i can iterate from 0 to 2 right i can get this diagonal sum as well and similarly take the sum and check it whether it is equals to 15 or not if it is not equal to 15 straight away return false right so it's very simple it's not very difficult so what i have to do, you have to do it's very uh, i let me just brief you out go over every i comma j pair let's say in this case what are we going to do we going to go for 0 comma 0 right let me just take this example also so that you will understand it better so let me just take that oh, okay so it would be like oh, yeah so this is like 4 3 8 4 then what are you going to do you going to start with 0 comma 0 we'll gonna check completely this grid right so you're gonna check the sum you did that then what you gonna do you can shift one towards right and then you're gonna check this one you check that but this is not satisfied how let me just check see this column is not satisfying or it is satisfying this is not satisfying nine oh this is also satisfying then who is not satisfying uh okay diagonal is not satisfying cool see 3 1 2 3 1 2 is not satisfying so that's not a uh, correct thing the first one is correct so this will be satisfying but if you go downwards you cannot go downwards right because there are only two columns left if you go downwards there is no thing nothing left so it's very simple you can deduce from that right and then uh, you just need to check the condition let me just quickly show you the implementation so that you understand it better the main thing logic here is just write the clean code nothing else it's not very complicated so just go the make a counter go through every i every j importantly go till n minus 2 and n minus 2 itself it will automatically handle the edge cases that you don't need to go through the boundary cases n minus 2 m minus 2 and just check whether this i comma j is a valid matrix starting point or not magic matrix okay then you gonna check you start with i you comma j and you are a grid you take a set that will tell you the duplicates you take the rule sum you take the column sum then very very important every condition you need to check whether see now i maintain variables from k to l how am i iterating starting from i 
i plus 3 starting from j j plus 3 less than not less than equals to these kind of things looping basics right k comma l is now my coordinates in the grid uh, i can create a new matrix also but it does not make any sense right why need to make you can just iterate no need to acquire another space complexity so if it is greater than 9 or it is less than 1 straight away return false or whether it's already we have figured out like this number we previously straight away return false otherwise keep inserting into a set and make into a row and call very very important these are since they are shifted you need to do the row k minus j because uh, we have made a vector not a map we are made a vector not a map so we have to they are zero base so k minus i the current row l minus j the current column so you're gonna add them then actually i didn't write uh, that 15 wala logic i figure out later but i already know the sum it it has to be 15 otherwise it won't work so you can do this also this way also that okay take the first row and check it but actually this row zero is always 15 so you can iterate on zero to three for every row every column if it is not equal to sum or 15 you can straight away return false similarly just calculate the diagonal whatever i told in the question i'm doing just exactly like that similarly see k plus i k plus j I'm gonna take the diagonal if not equals to sum then return false similarly the other diagonal well, k equals to 0, k equals to 3, i plus 2 minus k, and k plus j. And if it is not equal to sum, again return false. And otherwise, every condition is satisfied, you have to return true eventually. And that is perfectly thing. What you can optimize here, first optimization you can do is directly check grid of i plus 1 and j plus 1 should be equals to equals to 5. It is not the case straight away return false. It won't be a valid magic matrix. And Otherwise, sum is always 15, that though it is fine. And yeah, this is, you can use, instead of a set, you can use a Boolean array, that also you can use so that it reduces your time complexity to log n and something like that. So, overall time complexity is like n into m into 9, t into 3, and into log n, I have did log 3. You can say something like NM itself, sort of. It's like NM time complexity, overall space complexity. We have user set, so you can say O of 9, which you can say that O of 1 itself. Right? This is, I hope, it's very simple. I hope you understood the entire solution, the entire thought process. Yeah, if you love the video, make sure you to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and see you in the next video. Then, till then, keep learning. Goodbye.